Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am in the process of moving my office from one room to another. So this is what I have right now. I'm also filming this later than I typically do. Let's go for this. Another weekly wrap up. So this week I finished three things. The first thing I finished was Delicious in Dungeon Volume 1, which Volume 7 is part of my 2000 through 2 for 2023 reading challenge. So I had to start. And I am really enjoying this first volume at least. The whole premise is there's a group of adventurers, kind of D&D-esque, and they're facing off against a red dragon. Some of their people die, some of them get out, and the person who had died is, a, is the sister of one of the adventurers, and he's like, well, I'm going back, and they're all like, we have no money, we have no equipment, these people are leaving our party, what do we do? How We have to eat, or we, we can't do any of this. And he goes, well, we're just gonna eat the monsters in the dungeon. And that starts it, so it's all about eating the monsters in the dungeon and how would you cook it. And it's hilarious. <laughs> I'm glad because I need to get up to seven to complete my that part portion of my challenge. I then read Black Eyed Peas and Hoghead Cheese by Glinda Armand and artist is Steffi Walthall. And this is a children's book about a young girl who is preparing a New Year's dinner with her grandmother. She isn't thrilled about everything that they are making, but she really enjoys grandma's stories and grandma's telling her why these foods are important. And it's just, it's an extremely heartwarming story. Uh, I heard it from Ashley over at Bookish Realm and yeah, if any of you have children or even if you don't and you just want a nice heartwarming book, this is a great one. Especially because for me, it's fun to hear about food history and where food and concepts came from. So that was really cool. And then I finished The Trellis by Jules Cantor. So that's the third of the six books that I have to read for the self-published science fiction contest done. And out of the three I've read, this one so far is my favorite. I really just enjoyed it. It's set in a dystopia world. However, it's not post-apocalyptic. It is post-climate change. So crazy things have happened and then to our weather and environment. And then we have corporations that are running so much of the country to the point that they're taking over. And then you have automation of jobs where computers are being able to do the simple basic jobs, but people still need to eat and they're still expected to pay for their food and their rent. And so the economy hasn't changed, which means then there's food scarcity, there's job scarcity, and there's lots and lots of issues. It follows two points of view. One is Debbie Peck, who is a mediator, who ends up getting a really good high paying job at the Jefferson Trellis. It's a building in Chicago. In this world, it's not a real building in real life. She thinks that she's, you know, made it to a life of security and safety, which let's face it, that's what a lot of people want is you want to be secure in your life. Know that you can pay your bills, you can feed your family. And she has lived through the troubles, as they call them, of when society broke down and more corporations are taking over. And she doesn't want to go back to that. And then the other point of view we are following is Melody Jackson, who is a detective investigating a two deaths related to the Jefferson Trellis and uncovering the bigger sinister plot behind everything. Cantor has written a book where it's a plausible future can going forward. I, I don't think it's 100% plausible. I, maybe I believe in a little bit more hope of 
people not being jackasses, but it, it is a plausible one. So if you like near future science fiction, this is a good one to pick up. I know I have three more books left that I need to read and I need to get them read by the 30th of January, but I needed a break from the science fiction. So I am currently reading Book Lovers by Emily Henry, which was a recommendation by Jen over at Jen's Bookshelf and then Bethany Atazada, Atazada? I totally butchered that last name. This book was on both of their favorites lists for last year, so this is also my first Emily Henry, and I am so far enjoying it. I started reading Melody by David Hoffer, and this was the book that I knew least about because I, the other seven people on my team had already voted yes for it, so I knew it was going to be chosen, so I didn't get too far into it, but I'm enjoying it so far. Hopefully, I will finish it this week. That is the plan. I need to finish it this week and finish one of the other two. So the other two that I need to read is The Stars Within by Lena Allison Knight and A Space Girl from Earth by Christina McMullen. So these three books are my focal point. This is what I have to read before the end of this month. So yeah. I forgot to say that I am also currently reading or listening to Elantris by Brandon Sanderson as and this is a prompt for somber honey books reading challenge for this year. Uh, the January challenge was think of a big name author and go back to their debut book which for Brandon Sanderson is Elantris and I could only get it in the CD audiobook, so I'm listening to my car very slowly because most of the places I travel are close. So that book will probably go into next month as well. Not a big pile of possibilities, at least until those are done. Then I have more options of things that I can pick up and read for fun. writing wrap up? Well, I haven't been writing. And I know, it, I'm a broken record on that. Just other things have been coming up like t moving offices and trying to get logistics taken care of. This month has really been turning more into a rest and relaxation month, and I'm okay with that. I have been working on my rewatch of the first seasons of Warehouse 13 and really enjoying it, having a lot of fun doing that. I am, I'm gonna keep this one short. What you can expect from me in the future is I still need to put up my review for these Prisoning Hills and my Buzzword Readathon wrap up for last year, plus my new list for this year. So those are the things you can expect here in the near future. Thank you and have a great day.